In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up iOS emulation on the Xbox Series X and S. Touch HLE has been ported to the Xbox Series X and S, and with it comes iOS 3 and under game emulation. While compatibility is still lacking in many regards, it is a cool thing to see, and there are some interesting things that are fully playable in the compatibility list. Best of all, it is actually pretty simple to get set up, so let's go ahead and dive in. Now to get started with iOS emulation on the Xbox Series X and S, you are going to need to have your Xbox Series X or S registered for developer mode. So link in the description below, you should find my Xbox dev mode setup guide. You can also install RetroArch with that as well if you are interested in emulating more systems. But follow along with that video to get dev mode set up and then come back to this one. We're not gonna just re-include it all because it's just kind of a waste of everybody's time. So. Again, link in the description below. The next thing you're going to need is a USB drive of any variety, be it HDD, thumb drive, or external SSD. And it needs to be formatted with the proper security permissions. This is all again covered in the dev mode setup guide, so do follow along with that. Again, link in the description below, but if you would just like instructions on setting up the drive, got separate videos for those as well. Next, we're gonna head to the dev store to download Touch HLE for the Xbox Series X and S. A link to the dev store will be in the description below, so just scroll down here until you get to the emulator section and find Touch HLE. And then just click on the download button to get that downloaded. Now, as of making this video, Touch HLE comes in a zip folder. This might not always be the case, so please pay attention to your download when you get it. If it is in a zip folder with the extension of .zip, just go ahead and get this extracted. If it comes in an AppX or M6 bundle, that means it is already extracted and is ready to be installed, so you don't have to do anything special there. Just go ahead and get it installed on your Xbox, which I will show you how to do now. So to get Touch HLE installed, just go ahead and get your Xbox booted up to your dev mode dashboard. Make sure you have all the network stuff set up from the initial setup video and make note of your remote access IP address. Once loaded up into your Xbox device portal under my games and apps, click on add. And now you can either drop in the Touch HLE app right here or click on choose file. Now navigate to the folder where you have it downloaded and we're gonna select the Touch HLE M6 bundle here. Now we're gonna click on next. And so as of making this video, there are three dependency files that came along with it. If you don't have those files, you could just skip over this step, but we're just gonna go through and select each one, get them added to our list. And once everything is set, click on start to begin the install. And done. And with that, we are now done with the Xbox device portal. Now back over on our Xbox, we're just gonna navigate down to our new Touch HLE entry here and change it from an app to a game if you don't have this set in the Xbox device portal by default. So just come in here, change it to a game. And then I always like to restart my system afterwards, just a me thing. You don't really need to do that, but it makes me feel better. But with Touch HLE installed on our Xbox Series X and S, we're just gonna get some stuff finished up on our USB drive to be able to actually run this. So the first thing we're gonna do is just open up your Xbox USB drive. And at the root of the drive, we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna name it iOS, so lowercase i, capital O, capital S. I don't think it matters too much, but that's what they say to do, so that's what we're gonna do. So there we go. Now we have an iOS folder. Now we are going to need some files from the PC version of Touch HLE. So we're just gonna head over to the actual Touch HLE website here, and then we're gonna download it from the build page here. And we're just gonna grab the latest stable release. And we're just gonna grab the Windows version of that. All right, and with that downloaded, we're just gonna go ahead and get this extracted. So again, zip format, so you can use pretty much anything to get this extracted. And with that extracted, we're just gonna go ahead and get it opened up and we're gonna need a few things out of here. So the first two we're gonna need are these two folders right here, Touch HLE Dialibs and Touch HLE Fonts. So we're gonna grab both of these and they also need to go into the root of our Xbox USB drive. This may change in future updates, but as of making this video, this is where they need to go. So they're just gonna go in just like this. 
Next, we're gonna need to copy the touch HLE default options.txt also into the root of our USB drive, just like this. And now finally, we're gonna go into the iOS folder and we're going to copy touch HLE options.txt in here. And that is now all set and we'll be able to launch touch HLE, but it's going to get mad at us because it can't find a game file to load. So as of making this video, Touch HLE on Xbox Series X and S only loads a default app named app.ipa from the root of your USB drive. So you're going to need to store games one at a time if you want to use them. It's a bit cumbersome. Hopefully we see a front end come shortly, but for this video, that is the case. So games need to be for iOS 3 or under, and they need to be decrypted, which you can do right from an old iPhone or iPod Touch. Unfortunately, I don't have those devices, so I do not have any way of decrypting games or backing up any legit iOS games. But thankfully, on the Touch HLE website, they have an app archive of legally acquired games, and so they only have one right now of Touch and & Go, and it has both Touch and & Go and Touch and & Go Lite. So we can download this to demo Touch HLE for Xbox Series X and S for you today. So now that I've got an iOS game here, again, it needs to be renamed app.ipa, just like this. And that just goes right into the root of your USB drive. And with that, we are now all set to load it up and give it a shot. So go ahead and get your Xbox USB drive, move back over to your Xbox. So now back over on the Xbox, I'm gonna head down to Touch HLE and tell it to start now that my USB drive is in place. And you may get a prompt to update to the latest version. I'm not going to do that right now because it actually breaks Touch and Go. It forces it into a horizontal layout, which is not great. And I have not been able to get it to go back through any options that I will show you how to configure later. So for this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this. But there you go. Now you can see that I have Touch & Go up and running down here in the bottom left corner. It's super small, not exactly an ideal way to play it, but that's okay. It's just for demonstration purposes right now to see that yes, it is running. So the emulation, turn that music off real quick. So the emulation is running pretty smoothly. And it's kind of like DS emulation where your right stick controls your emulated uh, finger and you can use the right stick click or right bumper to select things on the screen. We can come in here and begin playing the game. And depending on the game, you could do different controls. Like you could set actual physical Xbox buttons up for touchscreen controls and different games. Again, I just don't have things to demo with that but I will show you what I mean in just a moment. But you can see that this is all working as intended. And then the left stick can act as a slider for your tilt or gyro, I guess, would be the better term to use here. But it's pretty awesome stuff. But that is the basics of getting Touch HLE up and running. So now let me show you how to configure some advanced options to kind of make this a bit better to experience. So just gonna go ahead and quit out of Touch HLE. And now we're gonna move the USB drive from our Xbox back over to our PC. All right, so back over on our computer, you saw how Touch and Go was super small in that corner there, it's not great. So let's go ahead and edit our config file to make it so that will actually be centered and full screen. So in our iOS folder, you will see that there is now a touch HLE log text file. And inside this shows us the last game that we just played. So there's one thing that we need out of here and that is the identifier of the game that we just played. So this goes for any game that you just played. It'll show up identifier. You need to copy this whole name. And then we can go ahead and close out of that. Now under Touch HLE Options, we're gonna open that up and we're going to comment out the name of the game. And now we're going to put the identifier in place and we're going to put a colon. And to get this in full screen, we're gonna add dash dash full screen, just like that. 
And now we're just gonna go ahead and save the file and exit out of it. And now when we turn the game on, it's going to be centered and be a lot larger than it was before. It's not stretching the image, it's still going to be pillar boxed, but it's a lot better to work with. And if you're curious about other options that are available to you within the config file, in the Windows version of Touch HLE, it has an options help text file. And if you open this up, it will show you all the different options available to you. So one that you might be interested in is the scale hack. This will upscale the internal resolution of games. I, again, I'm not gonna mess with that one for this one, but options are here for you to mess with. And then as for game controller options, you can set dead zones, tilt ranges, offsets, and then button to touch. So you're able to map in the different buttons for different parts of the touch screen. You just need to know the coordinates of those buttons. Bit complicated, but it's pretty cool that the option exists. And again, you did put in a default options text file into the root of your USB device. And that does come with a lot of pre-configured options for certain games, so not very many. Again, not a lot of things are really compatible with this yet, but you'd see that there are some available. But anyway, let's go ahead and demo that new option with Touch and Go. So just got the USB drive put back on my Xbox. Let's go ahead and launch Touch HLE. And again, I'm gonna skip the update for now because it breaks Touch and Go. And there we go, Touch and Go now full screened and a lot more visible and playable for us here. So that is fantastic. So that's gonna do it for our basic Touch HLE setup guide for the Xbox Series X and S. While iOS emulation is something that I think is actually pretty freaking cool to see, Still has a bit of a ways to go for a lot more games to be playable, but there are quite a few good ones that are available right now, like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 for iOS, uh, Wolfenstein 3D, just a couple other things. So looking forward to seeing how this one progresses just overall as an emulator, but it's really cool to see it on Xbox Series X and S. It runs really well for touch and go at least. I'm sure that more demanding 3D titles are going to be a bit more demanding, but there is a compatibility list on the Touch HLE website. You can type in your game name, see if things are working or not. So do use that list. Link will be in the description below and it will help you figure out if your game is worth trying to get running or not. But thank you so much as always for watching today's video. I hope you have found it informative and it helps you get your iOS emulation up and running on your Xbox Series X and S. Here at the end, just the usual favors to ask. If you haven't already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, depending on how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads always coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. Now, if you'd like to further help support the channel and help us keep it growing, please be sure to check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Every little bit helps keep us going and again, brings this content to you. Thank you to all of our current backers. You're incredible. Thank you for believing in what we do here and helping us keep it going for so long. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you all back next video.